I understand if restoration videos are a bit overdone nowadays. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of creators I love to watch do it, but it's just not an area that I really get into. Having said that, I have been meaning to clean up these old files for a very long time. They rusted up in the old workshop years ago, which was really an open shed. The workshop had a lot of humidity issues, and a protective coating would have gone a long way in protecting them. I guess you learned that lesson once, plus I was a lot younger and a lot less experienced back then. Even though they are rusted, there are still some pretty good and usable tools underneath that rust. All the files, with the exception of the Nicholson, are all Australian made, and date back to being made in the late 80s to mid 90s, so they should be a pretty decent quality. So I think it would be really nice to restore them back to their original condition. Thankfully, some are in better condition than others. Before I remove the rust, I'll need to clean up the teeth. The file wasn't cleaned before it rusted, and there's a fair amount of gunk that's actually caked into the teeth. The rasp also needs the wood picked out of the teeth. A bit of denatured alcohol helps soften the wood to help clean it out. and they're already looking a lot better. Now everyone has their own favourite method of rust removal, and I don't think one is clearly better than the other. They all have their own pros and cons, however I like to use electrolysis. I filled a container with 5 litres of water, and I added about half a cup of sodium carbonate washing powder. People tend to agree that carbonate works better than sodium bicarbonate, and I tend to agree that it works a little bit better, though I've used bicarbonate in the past and it seems to work. And it's pretty inexpensive to get, a kilo of it goes for about $3. You'll also need a 12 volt DC battery charger. I'll bundle the wire up using some steel wire. This helps ensure that they are all in contact with each other and the power source. I'll also need a sacrificial piece of steel, which I got from some scrap mild steel. Later on, I also added a piece of scrap cast iron. I placed each of them in the tub, and importantly, I connected the positive red to the sacrificial steel and the black negative to the files. And very quickly, the parts will begin to bubble as hydrogen is produced, and it can be a little bit of a hazard as hydrogen is explosive. I'd also recommend against using salt as the electrolyte, as it can produce chlorine gas during electrolysis. Now this is really a hands-off process. Time will vary depending on the size and how bad the rust is. The two files that weren't too bad took about 4 hours to complete, whilst the other two took about 8. And with the files completed, any stuck debris that I couldn't remove before can be removed now. And it has to be said, for 8 hours of pretty much hands off work, they look worlds better than they used to. Before I continue, I'd like to try and sharpen the hand files. After 30 years, the teeth certainly aren't as sharp as they used to be. Like before, there's a million different ways to sharpen a file. Some say electrolysis works, but I've always gotten the best results from acid etching. Lots of people use dilute sulfuric acid found in drain cleaner. 
but overnight in a bath of vinegar has always worked really well for me. This is 4% acetic acid, though they also sell it in high concentrations. A litre of this stuff you can pick up for about $1.50 a litre, and overall it's a really inexpensive and really hands-off way to sharpen a file. It's a pretty slow process, so I gave it about 12 to 18 hours. And a quick taste test tells me that these will go pretty well with some hot chips off the lathe. And I can definitely tell that the teeth are a lot sharper than they were before. And this isn't necessary with such a weak acid, but a mix of bicarb soda and water should neutralise the acid. As a result of the acid etch, the steel has also darkened in part due to the manganese content of the steel. So I'll remove the top layer using some scotch brite. And I'll finish it off with a coating of WD-40. The last thing that I need to do is make a handle, which I'll make from some tazzy oak. I've never been that good at grinding wood turning tools from scratch, so I made a carbide tool using a button insert from a face mill. It looks similar enough to a carbide tool that I have used in the past, so hopefully this works just fine. And I didn't have a countersunk screw in the correct size, so I just used a cap head. And that's three files and a rasp ready to go back into service. With proper care, these files should have a good long service life left in them. As long as I don't deform the teeth, the acid sharpening should work for a long time to come. 
The acid doesn't fix bent teeth, so hopefully I should keep that to a minimum. Overall, $10 in materials and a day and a bit of mostly hands-off work has given these tools a whole new life. And honestly, nothing beats a good vintage-made Australian-made tool. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this one, hope you learned something new, and with that, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.